Hello and welcome everyone to this eCognition Constructed video. Today we're gonna have a look at the automatic threshold algorithm. This algorithm computes automatically a threshold based on the histogram of a single layer. You can use then this threshold as input for example for the multi-threshold segmentation. You can compute this threshold on the entire scene or on individual objects and the combination, for example, of the automatic threshold algorithm and the multi-threshold segmentation allows you to create a fully automated and adaptive image analysis workflow, right? So you can apply it on a different image, a different scene, and it will compute a different threshold and based on that, it will create the image objects. This algorithm requires a single input layer. And then what you also can change in the parameters is the value range so you can compute it on the entire value range or restrict it to a certain range or you can define the min and max values as an output it creates two variables a threshold variable and a quality the quality defines or gives information how good the threshold is and the threshold can be used for segmentation the advantage is that it will work in different regions independent on the value range so it's computed on the input value range that you give the algorithm and if you work on a different scene you have a different input it computes a different threshold okay now for the ones that are really interested in how it's computed in the background here is the information if you're not interested in this just fast forward so what we're doing in the background is we calculate the histogram if you have 8-bit band it's separating it into 256 slots if you have a 16-bit signed or unsigned in 65,536 slots and for other types we simply choose 1000 slots and what this algorithm does it looks for the best threshold that separates bright from dark pixels so overall it computes the standard deviation for the complete histogram and then we start splitting it based on these slots and we are moving from left to right and for each slot the weighted standard deviation is computed to the left side and the weighted standard deviation to the right side and then we use this fairly simple formula to compute the quality it's the overall standard deviation minus the weighted standard deviation uh, standard deviation left of the slot and plus the standard deviation right of the slot the weighted standard deviation and then we find the max uh, quality value and we write this quality value into the variable quality and the corresponding pixel value or the slot value for that quality value that we have computed will be written into the threshold variable and that's the variable you can use for splitting your objects and using it as a threshold to put it in a nutshell and to put it into words, I'm just going to read this statement. So the algorithm will detect the pixel value where the histogram can be split into dark and bright parts so that the variation of dark and bright is in minima. We calculate the weighted standard deviation for dark and bright and find the max value comparing the deviations with the overall deviation. And the max value represents the histogram slot with the best differentiation between dark and bright parts of the histogram. So that's the formula put into words. You actually don't have to understand it. I'm going to show you quickly in the graph how it works, how it looks like, and then it actually quite often gives you very nice results. So you can use it even though you don't understand it. Here's a histogram. Again, it works on one layer and it computes the histogram. In this case, I use the histogram that I'm going to show you later on the data set for x-axis depicts values and the y-axis is the count so how often does this pixel value appear in my image the value range is based on a, an index which ranges between minus one and plus one and the algorithm finds the best separation between bright and dark in this case the output was minus 0 0.0132 this would be here and then you can split the image based on that threshold and it works very nicely if you have two features like water, non-water, vegetation, non-vegetation that are nicely separable and that show a nice contrast between each other. And again, for different inputs, you get different thresholds. So in this case, I'm going to show you eight different data sets. Here I 
depicted four histograms, so half of the scenes. Um, and again, it's based on the index layer in the WI. You see that the histograms look different and therefore the results for the thresholds are also different. And here you see the position and they actually see also based on the histogram that it nicely differentiates the dark area and the bright area. Let's open eCognition. I'm going to show you how you can compute the automatic threshold and how you can use it and apply it so you get a segmentation and classification in one step. I'm going to simply close this window and you will find eight TIFF files based on Landsat data in the data folder. I reduced them to three layers, green, red and the infrared. Okay, let's um, start right away with batch creation of projects. In your cognition, by default, you're in a workspace environment and you can do batch importing of data sets. If you simply right click here in this window, choose predefined import. We do have some predefined import routines defined here. One will help us a lot, which is called generic raster one file per scene. And that will go into a folder that you define here. In this case, this will be the data folder. So you define the folder and it looks into that folder and it's gonna create for each file that it finds in that folder a project. If you wanna open a project, simply double click on it. Let's try to develop a rule set and implement this automatic threshold algorithm in there. Okay, so what we first gonna do is, before we calculate the threshold, is to mask out the no data areas. And I'm gonna use the multi-threshold segmentation to do so. Image layer doesn't matter. Unclassified, I'm gonna background create a class and uh, give it a grayish color and threshold is zero. If you replicate this, it will create two objects, one representing the background with zero values in this layer one and the other one will stay unclassified and then we're gonna run the automatic threshold in the unclassified image object. Let's see if that works. Okay, the result looks good. We have the no data classified as background and everything we're interested in is in an object which is unclassified. And the following steps gonna use this as domain settings. So we're gonna work on unclassified. And what we wanna do actually is discriminate water from non-water based on an index layer. We're gonna use the NDWI, which stands for normalized difference water index. Let's quickly compute this NDWI and then compute the threshold, the automatic threshold based on this layer. And then we're gonna use this threshold to do the segmentation. So right click add new process in the process tree. I'm quickly gonna change the layout here to rule set development layout. That's what we recommend the window layout to develop a rule set with the few settings on the left, the process tree and so on. And the other layout is the data management layout, which is meant to be there for data management. Okay, so add new process, I'm looking for index layer calculation. And I wanna calculate the NDWI, so you have to change that. Green layer is layer one in our case, and near is layer three. Simply hit execute, and that will add a new layer here on the left in the few settings called NDWI. Let's display that one. And high values correspond to water, more or less positive values, and negative uh, values are not corresponding to water. Okay, now we wanna compute this automatic threshold. That's what the video is all about in the next step. I right click here again, add new process, and the process is called automatic threshold. It's this one. And in this case, you simply have to change it here to the NDWI, that's layer. Look at the entire value range. Threshold and quality, these are variables where the information is stored. So in this case, I'm simply gonna type in TH for threshold. This create variable window pops up, simply click OK. That's gonna create a variable TH with a value of zero and it's a double and that's gonna override this, uh, write the information of this automatic threshold into the threshold. 
variable quality that's the quality information same procedure and now what's important is because we only want to calculate it in the unclassified object you have to change the domain to image object level and then choose as class filter the unclassified image object hit execute and then it should change th and qa variable and you see it here so the computed threshold the best threshold to separate bright from dark more or less is minus 0 0.0132 okay is it good i don't know that's why i'm gonna apply it i'm gonna use it um with the multi threshold again so i'm gonna add a new process look for the multi threshold segmentation again domain is important image object level and we're gonna work in the unclassified object image layer also very important it's the ndwi minimum object size one okay so it's gonna create it can it's allowed to create small image objects with a pixel size and now threshold we're gonna simply use this computed threshold from the automatic threshold algorithm th everything that's below that one is let's say non-water uh, non-water has the orange color and class 2 everything that's brighter than our threshold in the NDWI layer is water and water is most of the time blueish okay I'm gonna execute that that should run fairly fast and then we have a water non water mask in our unclassified so the background stays untouched and that is the final result for this image let's split the view let's use swipe view and I'm gonna simply check the result I'm gonna change the stretch up here so you see it nicely captured this lake also that lake up here but also in this transition area right it did a good job uh, I actually don't know if these areas are flooded you would need to do some field surveys to check that and it also captures small ponds right or small lakes like this one here okay but remember we have multiple projects um, and let's try to run that rule set on all of these projects save the rule set so if you right click here or simply use the save button here save rule set I am going to put it into my data folder okay now I'm gonna go back to the data management layout and close my project project was modified save changes no I saved the rule set and I simply can run it again so there's no need to save the changes all our projects that we have created are in a clean state so to say so they are created nothing has been altered and what I'm gonna do now is using the eCognition server to patch process if you don't have an eCognition server license simply double click a project open it and then load the rule set execute it check the results and then you can open another project simply again via double clicking here in the workspace if you have a server license or multiple ones just make sure that the server engines are running in my case it's running because I have the green dot down here I have four server licenses I'm using the shift key to select all of my projects right click and hit analyze eCognition asks me or tells me that before I I can analyze my projects I need to save the workspace if you open eCognition it creates a default workspace right but you need to save it somewhere okay so I want to save it I'm gonna save it also in the data directory call it new workspace or automatic threshold workspace now it's stored there I can go ahead I'm not going to go into detail here this local host is providing the server engines locally load rule set I'm gonna have to load the rule set that I saved it's in my data folder 
and simply hit start and it will batch process and parallel process my workspace so all the projects that i've selected you see the state changes here from processing then to processed and at the bottom, bottom you see waiting um, i'm just gonna fast forward and then we're gonna check the results okay all my projects have processed let's have a look at those you see also the elapsed time here so it always took less than a minute that's good um i downloaded data from different regions in the world to show you that the automatic threshold computes different thresholds let's open this one and what you need to do is display the image object information window so you see the threshold for this project is minus 0 0.0625 Let's display the classification and that's how the classification looks like. Quickly splitting the view. And does a really good job here in finding a threshold for water, non-water in this case. Even though you have, I think that's ice on the water or reflections as well. And the NDWI, so the index layer calculation, really helps here instead of just using layer 1, layer 2, or layer 3. Right? Um, quickly can illustrate that if you go through the bands. That's the NDWI, so this one really nicely doesn't discriminate here if it's water reflection or a little bit of ice on the water, but the other bands do. So, very helpful to compute is NDWI. Let's have a look at the next one that also worked nicely and we have a different threshold here that was used to segment the image. Okay. That allows you to create a transferable rule set which adjusts automatically to the information in your scene. So it checks the histogram and based on the histogram on the input histogram it computes the automatic threshold all right one last thing that I mentioned at the beginning is that you also can compute this automatic threshold object-based which means in this case in our case we computed a scene variable which is valid for all image objects so they all have the same value right because it's one variable for the whole scene but you also can use the automatic threshold to compute a threshold for each object separately. I'm quickly gonna show that to you. You're also gonna get the rule set for download so you can have a look at the rule set. I'm just fast forwarding here the uh, development of the rule set. And I'm going to calculate this automatic threshold based on the NDVI this time. So I'm gonna have to create the NDVI and then I'm gonna calculate the threshold for each object that is now classified as non-water. Important in this workflow now is that when we create the variable, we choose object value here. So each object has a different value. And after running this, you see that each object has a different th underscore object value. And the th variable stays the same because that's a scene variable and the th object is a object variable. And actually now you could go ahead, use the multi-threshold segmentation and use this object variable as defining threshold. And then for each object, a different threshold is gonna be used. You're gonna see that in the rule set, which is available for download. Okay, so this is it. Please go ahead and try to use the automatic threshold in your workflow, in your rule set. Thank you very much for watching and here next time.